The examples in this video go with section 10.6, plane curves and parametric equations. Example 1, sketch the plane curve defined by the parametric equations, x is equal to the absolute value of t minus 2, and y is equal to t divided by 2 over the interval negative 4 less than t less than or equal to positive 4. Okay. What we're going to do here is we're going to make ourselves a little XY chart. And this is something that you have done previously for other classes. We know we're going to be choosing the numbers between negative 4 and positive 4. And so I'm going to write all those down the side here. And then in the middle column, my X value we're going to fill in the t right here for the absolute value of t minus 2. So let's see, this is going to give me the absolute value of 4 minus 2. The absolute value of 4 is 4, and 4 minus 2 is 2. So x is going to be equal to 2 when t is equal to negative 4. The absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3, and 3 minus 2 is 1. The absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. The absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1, and 1 minus 2 is negative 1. The absolute value of 0 is 0, and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. The absolute value of 1 is 1, and 1 minus 2 is negative 1. The absolute value of 2 is 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. The absolute value of 3 is 3, and 3 minus 2 is 1. And the absolute value of 4 is 4, and 4 minus 2 is going to be 2. Okay, now we're going to do our last column over here, the y column. We're going to plug our t values into the t divided by 2. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 3 divided by 2, this is going to be negative 1 and a half. Negative 2 divided by 2, this is going to be negative 1. Negative 1 divided by 2, this is going to be negative 1 half. 0 divided by 2 is going to give me 0. 1 divided by 2 is going to give me positive 1 half. 2 divided by 2 is going to give me positive 1. 3 divided by 2 is going to give me positive 1.5. And 4 divided by 2 is going to give me 2. Okay, so the ordered pairs that we want to graph will be positive 2, negative 2, and this will need to be an open circle because of the less than here. Positive 1, negative 1 and a half, 0 and negative 1, negative 1 and negative 1 half, negative 2 and 0, negative 1 and positive 1 half, 0 and 1, positive 1 and 1 and 1 half, and then positive 2, positive 2. All right, let's see what this is going to look like. Positive 2, negative 2, that's an open circle. Positive 1, negative 1 and 1 half. Zero and negative one. Negative one and negative one half. Negative two and zero. Negative one and positive one half. Zero and, well, that should be positive one. Sorry, not zero, that should be positive one. Wait, no, that should be, yeah, zero and one. So I took this point away right here. I put it in the wrong spot. It actually belonged right here at positive one, or negative one and positive one half. And I had put it back here at negative three and positive one half. So I moved it over here. All right, so now this looks right. Now, to show the direction in which this thing was traveling, remember we started here, 
we travel to this point, that's what the arrow is for, and then we travel to this point, and then we travel to this point, and then to this point, and then we turn around and went this direction. So the arrows are always indicating the direction of travel. And there's what our picture's going to look like. Example 2. Given x is equal to the square root of t minus 1 and y is equal to t minus 1, part a, eliminate the parameter and write an equation in rectangular coordinates. Part b, sketch the curve and indicate its orientation. Alright, let's go over to a new slide here. Now I've written our two parametric equations here. Now if we're going to eliminate the parameter, in this case our goal is going to be to eliminate the t. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and write one equation that has just x's and y's in it with no t's in it. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to pick one of my equations and I'm going to solve it for t. And I think I'm going to pick the second one here because the radical is not in this one. So if we add one to both sides, I'll be left with the equation y plus 1 is equal to t. And now I have actually solved an equation for t. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to take this half of the equation here and I'm going to substitute it into my other equation because that's going to give me an equation that has just x's and y's with no t's in it. And that's going to look like this. x is going to be equal to the square root of not t but y plus 1 and then the minus 1 that was already underneath the radical there. And we can actually simplify this. Um, these ones here are going to cancel one another out. So the equation they were asking me for in part A, x is equal to the square root of y. Now for part B, we're going to have to sketch this curve and indicate its orientation. That means I'm going to be making another chart. Okay, So I'm going to have my t's and then x, of course, is going to be equal to the square root of t minus 1, which should be minus sign right there, and then y is going to be equal to t minus 1, and then, of course, we need our ordered pairs that we're playing in the graph. Now, t has to be bigger than positive 1, and I know this because if I put anything smaller than positive 1 in underneath this radical, it's going to give me an imaginary answer. So here, we're going to have the square root of 1 minus 1, which is just the square root of 0, but that's 0. Here, I'm going to have 1 minus 1, but that's just 0. So far, I'm going to plot the point 0, 0. All right, we can put 2 in there. That's going to give me the square root of 2 minus 1. That's just the square root of 1, which is going to give me 1. Over here, 2 minus 1 is going to give me 1. That means I'm going to plot the point positive 1, positive 1. You can put 3 in there. This is going to give me the square root of 3 minus 1. That's going to give me the square root of 2, which does not have a nice square root to it. Over here, we're going to have 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. And so I would be plotting the point square root of 2, positive 2. That one's going to be a little bit trickier to graph because it doesn't fall nicely on one of my um, numbers on the graph paper. It actually falls in between them. So what I'm going to try and do is pick some nice numbers for t so that when I take the square root, I get an integer answer. So I'm going to skip over 4, and I'm going to pick 5, which gives me the square root of 5 minus 1. That's going to give me the square root of 4. That's a positive 2. And then over here, 5 minus 1 is going to give me 4, which means we want to plot the point positive 2, positive 4. And let's just go one more for good measure. I'm going to skip way ahead. I'm going to pick 10 because the square root of 10 minus 1 is the square root of 9, and I know the square root of 9 is 3. And then over here, 10 minus 1 is going to give me a 9. So the other point I want to plot here is going to be positive 3, positive 9. All right, we're ready to plot these. All right, we wanted to plot the point 0, 0, positive 1, positive 1, positive 2, positive 4, 
And positive 3, positive 9 is going to be somewhere up here way off the graph. And so we can indicate the orientation or the direction that it's heading. So we started here. We're heading there. That's my arrow. From here, we're going to go to here. That's my arrow. And then from here, we'd actually be heading up again. But I can't quite reach it because the screen there is in the way. But anyhow, this is a half of a parabola. Example 3, given x is equal to 4 times the cosine of theta and y is equal to negative 4 times the sine of theta, part A, eliminate the parameter and write an equation in rectangular coordinates, and part B, sketch the curve and indicate its orientation. All right, let's go over to another slide. I've written my equations down right here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two kind of little tricky things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of my equations and I'm going to raise both sides to the second power. That's going to give me x squared is equal to 16 because 4 times 4 and then the cosine squared of theta. And then the other one is going to give me y squared and then 16, because negative 4 times negative 4, times the sine squared of theta. And I wrote them one on top of the other one because this is where the tricky part number 2 comes in. I'm actually going to add these two equations together. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 16 times the cosine squared of theta plus 16 times the sine squared of theta. Now, the parameter in this problem is actually theta. So I'm trying to write an equation that has just x's and y's in it. There are no thetas in it. Okay? So the left side is taken care of. We just have the x squared plus y squared. On the other side, this is looking a little bit familiar to me. And I do see that I have a GCF, so I am going to factor out that 16. And that's going to leave me with the cosine squared plus the sine squared. And if we remember all the way back into chapter 4, actually chapter 5, when we were verifying these identities, this parentheses right here is actually going to simplify into 1. And so the equation that I want is going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. And now I have my equation in rectangular coordinates. Now we're going to sketch the curve and indicate its orientation. And I'm actually going to use the polar graph over here instead of the rectangular grid that's on the previous slide because I'm going to be picking an angle and then to get x, Remember, I'm going to do 4 times the cosine of theta. And then to get y, I'm going to be doing negative 4 times the sine of theta. And then, of course, we'll have our ordered pairs, x's and y's here. Okay. I actually didn't need the polar paper after all. Okay. All right, if I choose the angle 0, 4 times the cosine of 0, well, let's see. The cosine of 0 is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Over here, negative 4 times the sine of 0. The sine of 0 is 0. 0 times negative 4 is going to give me 0. So the first point I want to plot is positive 4 and 0. And then I'm actually going to move all the way up to 90 degrees. Now, I know before we actually went through and we figured out all of the angles from the unit circle. We went through and did them all. But I'm just going to pick out the ones that are going to give me nice, pretty integer answers here. 4 times the cosine of 90 degrees. Let's see, the cosine of 90 degrees is 0. 0 times 4 is 0. That means x is going to be 0. Over here, negative 4 times the sine of 90 degrees. The sine of 90 is positive 1. Positive 1 times negative 4 is going to give me negative 4. That means we're going to have a point at 0 and negative 4. 
But I'm going to move all the way around to 180. And we're going to look at the cosine 4 times the cosine of 180. The cosine at 180 is negative 1, and negative 1 times 4 is going to give me negative 4. And then we're going to look at 4, negative 4 times the sine of 180. Well, the sine at 180 is 0. 0 times negative 4 is just going to give me 0. That means this point is going to be negative 4 and 0. And then we'll move down to 270. We have 4 times the cosine of 270. The cosine of 270 is 0. 0 times 4 is 0. And then for y, we've got negative 4 times the sine of 270. The sine at 270 is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. So this point is going to be 0 and positive 4. And then just to make sure we get all the way around, we're going to do 360. 4 times the cosine of 360. The cosine of 360 is 1. And 1 times 4 is 4. And then negative 4 times the sine of 360. The sine at 360 is 0, and 0 times negative 4 is 0, meaning we're going to plot the point positive 4 and 0. All right, let's go back over to the rectangular paper instead of using this one, and we'll graph these on the rectangular paper. We have a point at 4, 0. We have a point at 0, negative 4. We have a point at negative 4, 0. And we have a point at a 0 and positive 4. And so this picture, and if we actually went through and got the um, angles at 45 and at 60 and at 30, we would find out that this is going to draw a circle. Now, which direction is it going? Well, remember, I started here. And then the next point I found was this one down here. So we're actually traveling in this direction. And this should more, look more circular and less box-like, but anyway. And there's our picture. Example 4, write parametric equations for the curve defined by y is equal to 2x minus 3 with the given definition for x. In other words, we have one half of our parametric equations. Our parameter is going to be t. We know what x is equal to. Now we just have to find out what y is going to be equal to. Well, this is not going to be too difficult to figure out because what I'm going to do, since I have an x in this problem, I'm just going to plug in what x is equal to. In this case, it's t. So y is going to be equal to 2 times t minus 3. And so my parametric equations for part a will be x is equal to t and y is equal to 2t minus 3. All right, for b, same thing. I know what x is equal to. I'm just going to plug it into my y equation. So y is going to be equal to 2 times. Let's see, x is equal to negative 4t and then minus 3. That means y is going to be equal to negative 8t minus 3. And the x, of course, the other part of the parametric equation was equal to negative 4t. So there are my parametric equations. x is equal to negative 4t y is equal to negative 8t minus 3. And then part c, x is equal to t divided by 5. Well, let's plug it in. We got y is equal to 2 times t divided by 5 minus 3. That means y is equal to 2 fifths times t minus 3. And then, of course, x was equal to t divided by 5, and there's our parametric equations. Example 5, an ant walks across a 72 inch by 32 inch picnic table along a straight path as shown. The origin of the rectangular coordinate system is placed at the lower left corner of the table. If the ant walks from point A at 72, 10 to point B, 20, 36 in 13 seconds, Write parametric equations to represent the ant's path as a function of time t in seconds. Assume that the distances in the figure are in inches. Part B, determine the ant's location 8 seconds after leaving point A. 
All right. Go to another slide. Our parametric equations are going to look kind of like this. X is going to look like the starting position for X plus some variable times our T right here. And then for Y, this is going to be the starting position for Y plus some variable times our parameter T. Furthermore, we know that the ant started at the point positive 72, positive 10. That makes this number right here be the ant's x starting position, and this one, the 10, be the ant's y starting position. And then they told us that the ant is going to walk to the point positive 20, positive 36. So we can solve for A and B by using the points that they gave us. I'll treat this one as my X and I'll treat this one as my Y. That means 20 is going to be equal to 72 plus A times T. And T we know is going to be 13 because they told us that the ant could travel that far in 13 seconds. So let's change this into 13a. So it takes 13 seconds to get from the starting point to our finishing point. All right, then all we need to do is solve this equation for a. So let's track 72. We've got negative 52 over here equal to 13a. So we'll divide by 13. And a is going to be negative 4. So the x parametric equation, x is going to be equal to 72 minus 4t. That's one of them. Now let's figure out what y is. Okay, Our ending point, 36 is going to be equal to our initial point, 10, plus b, this is what we're looking for, times 13. All right, let's subtract the 10 from both sides. We have 26 equal to 13b. And if we divide that 13 away, it looks like b is going to be equal to 2. So the y parametric equation is going to be the starting point 10 plus 2t. And here is our answer to part A. The parametric equations describing the ant's line of travel, x is equal to 72 minus 4t, y is equal to 10 plus 2t. And now for part B, it says where is the ant 8 seconds after leaving point A? Well, all we have to do is figure out what the x and y coordinates are when t is equal to 8. x will be equal to 72 minus 4 times 8. This is going to be 72 minus 32, which will give us 40. And then y is going to be equal to 10 plus 2 times 8. This is 10 plus 16 for 26, and so the ant will be located at the point positive 40, positive 26. Example 6. Suppose a cannonball is launched from a cannon at an initial height of 1 meter at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal with an initial speed of 200 meters per second. Round the values to one decimal place. Part A. Write parametric equations to model the path of the shot as a function of the time t in seconds. All right, now if we back up a couple of slides, we see that we're going to need to be using these formulas down here for projectile motion. Now, they've given me theta to be 30. And this part we're going to have to reason through, but I think we can take care of that. And V0, of course, is going to be the initial velocity there. So let's go ahead over here. We're going to have x is equal to 
our initial velocity, which they told me, 200 meters per second, times the cosine of our angle, which was 30 degrees, plus the x0 position. Okay, now, if you imagine on the graph paper, at time zero right here, the cannonball is one meter off the ground because this is the height from which it was shot. And this point is going to be our x0, y0, which in this case is going to be zero and positive one. So y0 is going to be positive one and x0 is going to be zero. So back to our equation, this is going to be plus zero. Okay. 30 is actually on the unit circle, so we have 200, oh, I forgot to put my T in there, times the square root of 3 over 2 times T plus 0, and this actually simplifies into 100 times T times the square root of 3. Now, if you want, you can put that T back here behind the square root of 3. Just be sure that you don't put it underneath the radical with 3, okay? But this is the parametric equation for x. All right, now let's go back and look at y. This is the gravity equation, okay? gt squared, g would be the acceleration due to gravity. And we're going to be actually using, which one? The meters per second. So this time we're going to be using the 9.8 meters per second squared for our acceleration due to gravity. B0, there's that initial velocity again, that was 200, and then there's our angle. And we already said that our initial starting point here for y was going to be at 1. So let's plug in the parts that we know. y is going to be equal to negative 1 half times 9.8 times t squared plus The initial velocity, 200, times the sine of 30, t, plus the initial starting point for y, which we said was 1. All right, let's clean this up just a little bit. Half of 9.8, this is negative 4.9. We've got t squared. The sine at 30 is actually a half, and half of 200 is 100, so we've got plus 100t, and then plus 1. And so our parametric equations, here's y, and here's x. So part A is done. Part B, for how many seconds is the shot in the air? That's our time. And since the y-coordinate represents our height, we're going to have to figure out um, the zeros for this because the cannonball should actually be in the air for the entire time until it actually hits the ground again because it's going to be traveling in a parabola like this. So this one is actually going to be less than zero because remember it started at one meter. So we're looking for this distance right here, or, or this zero right here. And then if I subtract, that should tell me how long the cannonball was actually in the air. And I really won't have to because we know it started um, at time zero and it was already off the ground there. So all I need to do is figure out what this x value is right here. Okay, this actually will not factor in, so I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. So t is going to be equal to the opposite of 100 plus or minus the square root. This is b squared minus 4 times a times c. And this is all going to be over 2a. All right, let's put this in the calculator. All right, so in the calculator, the Underneath the radical, simplifies into 10,019.6,
So my two options are our time could be negative 100 plus the square root of 10,019.6 over negative 9.8, or our time could be negative 100 minus the square root of 10,019.6 over negative 9.8. And when we put this in our calculator, this side will simply simplify into negative 0 0.01. Well, we can throw that out. We can't have a negative time. This side over here will simplify into 20.42. So part B, how long was it in the air? 20.42 seconds. All right. Part C, what's the horizontal distance traveled by the shot? Okay. Well, for part C, Horizontal distance, horizontal, that's my x-axis. And so I'm going to take my x equation there, 100 times t times the square root of 3, and I'm going to plug my time in right here. And that should tell me how far this thing traveled horizontally. So we got 100 times 20 times 42, 20.42 times the square root of 3. And when we put this in the calculator, I get 3,536.53. And it did tell me to round stuff to one decimal place, so let's go back and look at 3,536.5, and this one should be 20.4. All right, part D. When does the shot reach its maximum height? Well, again, we're going to be going back here to the y part of the parametric equations, and we're going to be looking for the maximum of that parabola. And we know it's a maximum because this negative right here tells me that it opens down. Okay, remember how to get the x-coordinate on the maximum or the minimum? The formula was the x-coordinate is equal to the opposite of b divided by 2 times a. Only in this case, our variable's t, it's not x. All right, so we're going to have the opposite of b, the opposite of 100, divided by 2 times negative 4.9. And we are supposed to round this to one decimal place, so let's see. Negative 100 divided by negative 9.8 is going to give me 10.2. So it's going to take about 10.2 seconds to reach its maximum height. And then for part E, well, what is the maximum height? Well, guess what we're going to do? We're going to use that Y part of the parametric equation again, and we're going to plug in the time that we just now found, and that should give me my maximum height. So Y is equal to negative 4.9 times 10.2 squared plus 100 times 10.2 plus 1. And then we'll put that in our calculator. And it gives me 511.2. And uh, that will be in meters. So 511 meters looks like it will be the maximum height.